Hello everyone, it is Miss Becky at the Glen Carbon Library, and this is week two of Let's Get Crafty. I think this is probably going to be backwards for you guys. I'm trying a new filming setup. As you can see, I've got the tripod leg right there. I'm not sure I can make that go away, but I finally got to the point where I had everything ready to go and I'm ready to do some more paper plate dinosaurs. So last week we did our salt fireworks painting and that was really fun. I had a lot of fun doing that with my kids as well. Um, they thought it was really neat when the salt that we had sprinkled on top of the glue that they had drawn, when that was finally ready for the paper to get turned right side up and the salt fell away, they thought that was the neatest thing. So that was really fun. And I also want to say thank you to the families that sent me pictures of their salt firework paintings. I just thought they were so beautiful and I love that you guys are getting a kick out of doing these crafts as much as I am. Okay, so for this week, we are going to be doing our paper plate dinosaurs. I am so excited to show you guys these. I've been having way too much fun with these the last couple of days as I've been making them. Okay, the first thing that we should probably talk about is that, let's see, the, the items that we'll be providing from the library and the items that you guys will need to have at home. So, from the library, you will be receiving, and this is if you registered, you have to register for the bags to receive the supplies. You can do that online at our website, glencarbonlibrary.org. Um, so the first item you're gonna receive in your bag, paper plates. That part was kind of obvious, wasn't it? The next thing we're gonna do is some toilet paper rolls. Um, I'm not sure how much we'll be able to provide. Um, so if you've got some extras laying around in your recycling, might be a good idea to get those out. And let's see, oh, the last thing. The last thing is the best part. The googly eyes. We all love googly eyes around here. You guys love googly eyes? They make everything better, don't they? So what you're going to need at home is some markers. Right now I just have yellow because that's the color I'm going to be working with today. You're going to need some glue. A glue stick is best for this one, but if you have bottled glue, it'd probably work just fine. Um, a pair of scissors. Oh, one of my dinosaurs is trying to get in already. Wait your turn. There we go. So a pair of scissors and, oh, this part's important too. Um, as I was working on this, I realized it was probably going to be best if we had some templates to work off of. So we are going to have a Diplodocus template, a T-Rex template, Pterodactyl template, and a Triceratops template. And you are not limited to those dinosaurs. That just gives you some ideas to work with. For our younger crafters, it can be a perfectly good idea if they just want to decorate the heads and tails of these dinosaurs. You can cut it out directly from the page and you can attach it to the paper plate that they work on. That will be just fine. For our older crafters who would like a challenge, you can cut these out and use them um, as stencils to see just how much of that paper plate you can use to make your dinosaurs. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. Uh, let's see, so the first thing that we're going to do is choose a color and color our paper plate, okay? You can decorate it however you like. For this one, I decided to go with a nice bright yellow. Um, and I wanted to say too, we're in no rush with this. I went ahead and colored this plate because uh, it took me a little while. But if you want to pause this video and take your time decorating your plate, 
please do. This is supposed to be fun. This is not supposed to be a rush. Okay, so I've colored my paper plate, right? The next thing that I want to do, and I should tell you what we're working on first, shouldn't I? We're working on a Triceratops. That's the one I'm gonna do for you guys today. Should I show you the ones that we've already done? They're looking at me, I think they wanna be included. First we have our T-Rex, rawr. Look at that googly eye. <laughs> He almost looks like you caught him doing something, doesn't he? He looks a little sheepish. Um, and one thing that I noticed with the T-Rex that I thought was really interesting was I was trying to move our um, toilet paper uh, roll. I was trying to have it further back, right? I thought that's where his legs belong. But what happens is he falls over. And as I was working on this, um, I was looking at pictures, drawings, and you know, the paintings of what people think Tyrannosaurus Rex looked like. And I was trying to figure out where to put this toilet paper roll for the legs. And I kept moving it an inch, you know, a little further, a little further towards the middle. And then I, I sort of gave up at one point and I just sort of set it down to try and figure out something else. And it stood right up. There it is, standing up all on its own without me holding it. And I looked at the pictures and realized in that moment, Tyrannosaurus's legs were in the middle of his body, really. And that was something I had never thought about before. Because I always thought he had the tail for balance, but he also has those big muscular legs to hold all the rest of this up. It's weird that you can learn that just from a paper plate dinosaur. I had never thought of that before. So I've named this guy Terry, Terry the T-Rex. He's gonna hang out with us today. We'll put him right there to the side. And then this other one is my big, beautiful Brontosaurus. Now, we were told for many years, Brontosaurus, that was just a made up name for a dinosaur right? We were supposed to call them all Apatosaurus. But just a few years ago, 2015, there were some very smart paleontologists who decided, oh no, Brontosaurus, that's its own thing. So I used the template of, where did I put it? I worked with the template of the Diplodocus, Diplodocus. Um, but I altered it a little bit. I did it a little freeform for myself to make my brontosaurus. I'm very proud of it. Okay, so, oh, and this brontosaurus, hmm. We'll name, we'll name the brontosaurus Betsy. There we go. Betsy's gonna hang out with us now too. Um, okay, so back to our triceratops. Okay. So you've got your paper plate ready to go, decorate it however you like it. You're going to fold it in half. You're gonna take your scissors and you're going to cut it right where you folded it. So now we have two halves of our paper plate. One half is going to be the body of our Triceratops. The other half is going to be the head and the tail. We're going to ignore the feet on here because we have our toilet paper rolls. Okay, so like I said, for our younger crafters, if you would like to go ahead and just decorate your Triceratops head, you can certainly do that. I am going to cut out the tail and the head. And 
while I'm doing this, I want to remind you guys that we have just a few weeks left on our summer reading club community quest. So in the next few weeks, if you have been doing your reading and working on your bingo sheet and the, uh, the game board, and what else did we have? We had a, um, oh, what's it called? Scavenger hunt. So if you have been doing all of that and your pages are starting to get filled up with all those hours you've been reading, you are welcome to either, you can take pictures of it and you can email it to me if you don't want to come to the library or you can bring them in if you would like to bring them in. Either way is fine with me. If you do bring them into the library, just make sure that you drop them off at the youth services desk. And we will be sure to get you all set up with the raffle tickets that we're going to be doing for the frozen custard from Annie's and then the gift certificates to Edison. So, let's see, I've got to cut out the rest of this horns, don't I? a little bit more. Okay. And remember, it's always a good idea to give the little ones a chance to try out the scissors. That is an important skill and they will need it in school. It's good for creating those fine motor movements that we need. Okay, so we've got our head cut out, <laughs> and we've got the tail, we've got our body. So we're just going to set the body aside right now, and we're going to go to our other half. I'm going to do this part for our older crafters, and we'll see how it works out. I don't know if I'll be able, oh, I think I will. Let's see, can we get it all on one plate? I should let you know I was able to do the T-Rex all on one, I, I just used one paper plate for the T-Rex. For my Brontosaurus, I needed an extra plate because her tail is just crazy long and so is her neck. Okay, so we've got our, tyran no, not Tyrannosaurus, that's my Triceratops. We've got our Triceratops. If I remember a pen, oh my goodness, is that the one thing I forgot? Sure it is. Well, let's see. Um, we are going to edit this part out. Okay, so you know how sometimes we're crafting and we forget things. Well, I forgot my pen and Miss Page out at Circulation helped me out and I'm very grateful for that. Okay, so we've got our pen now. We are going to be tracing our Triceratops just along the lines and remember these 
are supposed to be fun. It is not a perfect thing. We're allowed to make mistakes and sometimes mistakes can turn out even better than what we had planned. Remember what we were calling them last week? What Bob Ross called them? There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. One, two, three. That is the tri and triceratops. Do you guys know how long ago this guy lived? I have my notes over here. Let's see. About 68 to 66 million years ago. He lived during the Cretaceous period. That is a long time, isn't it? It's hard to imagine a thousand years, much less millions and millions of years. Okay, there's his head. Let's worry about it all. There we go. And now we're gonna do his tail. And I'm pretty excited, I got it all on one page. Or one, <laughs> one plate. Okay. So, we have our lines. I'm going to connect these two. They're just like that. Hopefully you can see that. And we're gonna cut these out. Do you know which of our other dinosaurs that I've made from paper plates, do you know which other one lived during the Cretaceous period? Does anybody have any guesses? It's this guy. Do you think he and the Triceratops would have been friends? What do you think? I'm not so sure because Terry the Tricer no, Terry the T-Rex, um, he was a carnivore, and our Triceratops here was a plant eater. So our T-Rex might have gone after our Triceratops. They both lived in North America at the same time. It's amazing to think about such gigantic creatures. Okay, so we're just cutting out our head. I don't know if that was off screen or not, but I'm still cutting off the head. Cutting. Cutting out the head, not cutting off the head. Okay. Almost done with the cutting. And like I said, you guys pause this video anytime you're ready to take your time with what we're making. So we have our body, we have our head, we have our tail. And what we're going to do next is we're going to get our glue. And I've found that the stick glue has worked really well for me with this. So, let's see. We want to think about where his tail is. What angle it's at. It looks pretty good to me. Just going out straight like that. So, I'm going to put down some glue. And I have found 
around with these paper plates because they're a bit curved, sometimes the pieces want to pull away from each other. And I found that the best solution is just using a paper clip to hold that in place while it dries. And that way I can keep working without worrying about shifting that. Okay, so our next piece is our Triceratops head. How does that look? Does that look good to you guys? I think it's pretty good. Okay, so use our glue. Triceratops body. Um, I'm going to leave the paper clips there while they dry. The next step is going to be turning these into his legs. Um, that is, I'm going to close my glue. That's going to be some time where we get to color again. So if you're at this point and you want to color along with me, great. If not, you can always pause it like we've been talking about. And we're gonna color. This marker is not doing the best. might be revolting on me after all that work they did on the paper plate. Oh, I am shaking the camera, aren't I? I try, I try. I told myself before I started recording I was really going to try not to shake the camera. And then I got caught up in my grounding. You know how that goes. Okay. are often the times when I'm crafting with my kids and things are quiet and we're just all working on something either separately or together and these quiet moments are times when we have had some of our best conversations happen. They'll have a question you know, something that they've been thinking about that they haven't had a chance to ask me yet. And it just gives them a moment to remember it was something they wanted to talk about. And it's led to some really sweet moments. It's just a good way to have a connection with someone to spend time like this together. It's not just about fine motor skills and learning something new. It's about spending time together. Okay, I think that one looks pretty good. And we're gonna do this next one. Let me try a different one.
Hopefully, if you got a chance to go see the fireworks, the high school on the third, if you guys had a good time, we found a really great spot that was just across the street from where they were going off. And we just felt so lucky. They were such pretty fireworks. And the full moon as the backdrop just made it feel magical. And that was our first fireworks in Edwardsville because we moved here after July 4th last year. My markers are revol revolting on me. Uh, let's see. Hopefully this one. easier time with some of the, the darker colors as I've been doing this. And you get to make your dinosaurs whatever color you like, whatever pattern you like. Make them polka dot. You could give them feathers. Lots of dinosaurs supposedly have feathers. Lots of research being done about dinosaurs all the time. Always learning new stuff about them. It's really neat. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough. And we are gonna move on to the next part, which is, there we go. Okay, so we get our scissors back again. We're gonna be creating a couple of slits in each of these to give our dinosaur his legs. And you don't wanna cut all the way. You just wanna cut, I would say a third to half the way. This is another one of those, you don't have to be precise. Um, you just want them opposite each other. Do the best you can. And on my other dinosaurs, it seems to have worked out just fine. Okay, so we've got our legs. Hmm, I think we should put on our highball first. Let's get our googly eyes. Let's see if we can find a good size for our triceratops. That looks good. I think that's a good one. Okay, so the googly eyes, if you've gotten them from us, they are the already sticky kind. So you just need to peel off the backing um, and they stick really well. Hopefully, <laughs> the others came off for me relatively easily. Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, so let's give our Triceratops his eyeball. I would say put it kind of where you want and then press it in a little bit to help it stick. There we go. All right, I'm gonna leave our paper clips here for now, just cause he's drying still. But we're gonna try out the legs and see if we need to adjust them at all. See. So then all you need to do is slide them on just like that. Yeah. And we can test him out and see if he stands up. Ta-da! He's good. That's great. There he is. He's ready to join our friends. All right, mister, you're going to stay over there. The other dinosaur that I wanted to show you, I'm still working on. I'm having a lot of fun with this one. Miss Elizabeth, who is our cataloger, she requested a stegosaurus. So I've been working on a stegosaurus. So, just like the other one, I started out with my round plate, colored it, cut it in half, and I don't have a stencil 
to work on for the stegosaurus. So I just kind of looked at pictures and thought about how the shape of the body looks, right? We're sort of working on a silhouette here, okay? So I saw that a stegosaurus has a slightly longer neck, the small head, and he has this tail. Now, the other thing that makes a stegosaurus special is the spikes, right? So I have some different sizes of that and I have them in two different colors. And I thought I would show you guys the pattern that I'm gonna lay out for those. Now these, uh, the spikes that I did, I've just, I just sort of did these freehand. I created a, my own stencil and then I just kind of went to town cutting these out. Okay, so I've chosen green and blue. And I've done eh, probably three different, four different sizes. Um, just trying to give you the impression of those big plates that he had on his back. And let's see, I've got some of the smaller ones here. going all the way down his back. Let's see, do we have any others? I got one more right there, and I think one more right there. And then I also cut out some smaller ones that look like that in green and blue as well. And so, Let's see, I know he has some smaller spikes on his tail. Like that. You get the idea, his tail's sticking up a little bit. And then, oh, and a green one. So some extra spikes on his tail, like that. And then he also has a couple Probably more than a couple, but I don't have the picture in front of me right now. He has some on his neck, too. Not really a dinosaur you want to get cuddly with, even though he was an herbivore. And he, I say he, they, they were probably boy and girl stegosauruses. Um, this stegosaurus lived during the Jurassic period. And Stegosaurus lived at the same time as Brontosaurus. And they were both herbivores. Maybe they could have been friends, right? So there we go. There's my Stegosaurus. Eventually, when I get a moment, I'm going to glue all these down. Um, but that's gonna take me a little while. So I'm gonna wait for a good time to do that. Okay. And let's see, oh, we could also put the googly on our stegosaurus. There we go. I think he needs a tiny one to go on his face. Oops. Right there. How does that look? I think that looks good. Okay. Let's get the paper off again if I can. Well, that's pretty easy. Place it where I want it and then just give it a little push, not too hard. All right, so there's our Stegosaurus. I think that's it, guys. I hope you have a good time with these. Um, I'm gonna have these paper plate dinosaurs out on our bookshelves as part of our display. And so if you come in the library, come by and say hi to the dinosaurs. And if you like this video, if you enjoy the videos that we are making. I would really appreciate it if you or your little one would like to hit the like button, the thumbs up, or you know, the heart. 
anything that will help us out. You know how it works with those algorithms. The more attention we get, the more people get to see it. So we would really appreciate that if you guys would help us out. If you have any suggestions on ways that we can improve this, that would be great too. I'm always open to constructive criticism. It's all about just having fun and doing the best we can. Um, oh, and the last thing, I would really love it if you guys would send me pictures of the dinosaurs that you made. I would love to see them. Tell me what kind of dinosaur you chose to do. Um, and uh, let's see, if you have any good dinosaur facts. I love good dinosaur facts. You can put those in the comments below the video, or if you wanna send them in the email to me, that would be good too. But I always love to learn new things about dinosaurs. Okay guys, this has been Let's Get Crafty. I'm so glad you guys joined me today. I hope you have a good rest of the day and have fun with your dinosaurs. Bye.